everyone, Kate here for my 2020 reading goals video. And I think I kind of usually feel daunted around November. Like, what are my reading goals? What do I actually want to do? But then as people start to talk about them, I realize, oh, there's actually things I hadn't, you know, verbalized or thought uh, specifically about that I did not like about my previous reading year and I would like to change for the next reading year. Now, I know there's always, um, you know, lots of enthusiasm in uh, at the end of the year and then in January to do these reading goals. And then sometimes you can kind of fall off the wagon. But I don't think uh, a fear of not achieving goals should hold me back from making these. Um, and yeah, it's it's what's fun. It's what it's exciting me right now and making me feel like maybe this could make my reading year um, even better. Uh, so there are going to be some things that will really maybe um, kind of throw off my reading, the big things that are happening uh, this year for me in my personal life. So we'll just, we'll see what I make of these reading goals. I'm really excited about it right now. And I, I like the things that I've picked, um, the things that I want to change with my reading year. And yes, so without further ado, the first is... I will be using a TBR template for each month, inspired by Katie from Books and Things. So Katie, um, I I don't think it was 2019 that she was doing it because now she's reading a lot more for work. But I think in 2018, she kind of had this formula of if I do this, this and this in a month, this is exactly kind of what I like to read in a month. And it makes me really happy. Um, and so this is not a TBR template. It's not a TBR, like I won't be sharing a monthly TBR on BookTube, I'll be doing wrap ups, but just for myself, um, I have this template, but I will tell you what the template is. And so I have, I want to read one nonfiction. I want to read one Christian nonfiction. I want to um, pick one book off uh, a list. Uh, so the list includes um, books that I was intrigued by um, from Honey for a Woman's Heart, which is a book uh, about books where she gives you just book countless books that she thinks are really worth your time. And I think we have really similar reading tastes. So I wrote down all of those. Um, I have them like all um, written down. So one from there, but also uh, or pick one from subscriber recommendations. So when I did my q and I asked people for book recommendations and I got so many that sounded really, really good. Or pick one from a literary fiction list, which is kind of uh, books that have been recommended to me by booktubers or people uh, I know um, and just different different things that I've heard about. So picking off those just being really intentional about what I'm reading. Um, then I want to try to read two Victorian books um, each month. We'll see if I am successful. And including in that my Victober five-star TBR predictions that I did for last year, um, trying to get through that list. Uh, I want to read probably four mysteries. Four is the number that I've put here because mysteries are really quick reads and I do a lot of them as audiobooks. Um, so if I need to change that number, I can totally change that number. Nothing needs to be permanent. Um, I want to try to read a fantasy each month. Um, we'll see how I do with that. I want to read a middle grade each month. Um, that can be an audiobook. You know, it doesn't have to be um, just physical copies. I want to do a reread each month. I think that rereads are as um, a rewarding reread is as exciting and rewarding as a finding a new favorite. Um, and I'm just I wish I did them more. So I'm going to try to do at least one a month. I honestly think more would be appropriate, but I'm just going to keep it modest for this list. Uh, I want to read Mark Twain. I'm not saying how many. If I like him, I'm going to read a lot. Uh, but I tried listening to the audiobook of his autobiography um, for Nonfiction November, and it was a terrible format to read it in because it included all of the footnotes and it was really choppy. And so I just want to check out the volume one of his autobiography from the library um, and read it that way. But I, I do think he might be a favorite author. We'll see. And then obviously I'm going to read a Louise May Alcott each month because of the Year of Louise May project I'm hosting with Megan Hannett. I also want to read more French classics. So I am really, you know, pretty strong on British 19th century literature and I want to uh, become 
uh, I'm more well-rounded. So last year I did try to do my reading around the world, like reading calendar, but I got bogged down um, when I tried to read the Odyssey with my husband. So one, the Odyssey is hard, but two, we tried to coordinate and listen to the audiobook together and it was really hard to find time just to sit down with an audiobook. Um, but I found, um, I, I thought it felt a little too broad is what I'm trying to say to be, have 12 different countries. Whereas I think it, I really love this, um, you know, year of reading um, different authors. So Mary Stewart and then Maud Hart Lovelace and now Louisa May Alcott. So maybe a year of trying French literature. Um, I'm My goal is between six and 12, you know, between one every other month or one every month. We'll see how it goes. It depends. DNS are totally allowed. Um, and then I have a TBR stack that I am doing. Um, so there was a project that you know was published on Instagram, Bookstagram, that was going around called um, 20 in 2020. So pick 20 books off your, um, you know, off your bookshelves that you've been meaning to get to and read those. And so I was going to do that. And then I ended up picking over 40 books. So I'm just calling it my TBR stack. Um, and I have a video coming out showing you all of the books in that TBR stack. Um, so my goal, I think, would be to read four months from that. Again, I might tweak these goals as the year goes on, but that's kind of, um, that's where I am right now. Uh, then I want to get to uh, 100 Victorian novels by Victober. So uh, I want, I remember two Victobers ago, Katie from Books and Things did a video on the 100 Victorian novels that she had read. And I thought, oh my goodness, I want to do that. Um, you know, I want to have read 100 Victorian novels and get to do a video like this for Victober. Um, and so two years ago, I sought out to do that. And I have just happened to like really keep up. I was at 50 books um, two years ago, 50 Victorian novels. And so I've kept an Excel like spreadsheet um, and I've been tracking. And right now I think I'm at 82. And so I think I can get to 100 uh, by next October. Um, and so then I could put up, a, you know, my first uh, Victoria, uh, my first 100 Victorian novels. I just think it'd be really fun and it's achievable. And also, uh, you know, reading the October five star TBR predictions combined with hosting read along most Victorians um, or read alongs most Victorian. It's really fun to do those. Um, again, DNFs are totally allowed. I don't want to get bogged down with a book that was not meant for me. Then uh, let's see here. Oh, I want to try to. Um, so then I, I know I just said it, but just to reiterate it, reading, I want to read one nonfiction and one Christian nonfiction each month. Just nonfiction November, I was like, oh my goodness, I really, I am um, doing myself a disservice by not reading more nonfiction. And it can be some of the most rewarding reading. So I want to make a concerted effort and included in this, I will be participating in Natalie from The Curious Reader, who's one of my absolute favorite channels. She is hosting a year long nonfiction reading challenge called The Curious Adventure, which I think is a really fun and playful title. And she has 12 challenges. So you can try to try to conquer one each month. And I will be um, posting, uh, you know, videos about those challenges, hopefully. Uh, one per challenge or one per, per book that I read. I might double dip with my challenges, but she's made just some really great challenges. So I will link her announcement video down below and she has linked the blog post with the challenges listed. And yeah, I'm definitely making an effort uh, to complete those challenges. And I just think it will be a really great way um, to get me to read some nonfiction that I will love, but I wouldn't have necessarily picked had um, I not followed the challenges. Then, um, Try not to have more than five in my currently reading folder on Goodreads. I am notorious for having like between 10 and 20 currently reading books. What happens is I get kind of like, I want to take a break from a book. So then I pick up another one. And then what happens is I get really overwhelmed at the amount of currently reading in um, on my Goodreads. So I will slowly but surely be getting down to five, um, you know, in January and February. And then I will try not to get above five. So I figure five is enough to have like maybe one Victorian novel, um, a mystery audiobook, a read aloud with my kid. And then that still leaves two more um, that I 
that I can have on there. So because I do think um, the way I read so much, one of the things that I do is I read more than one book at once. But five is definitely plenty. And I think hopefully that will help me to feel kind of less overwhelmed by the reading load that I have. Um, then yes, I have reading French literature, um, reading Mark Twain, The Year of Louisa May, um, and uh, one reread a month. And then I have found out about the, there is a Christian um, quarterly magazine, uh, primarily aimed at women that comes out called Daughters of Promise. And they have put on a winter reading challenge um, and it's called Brighter Winter. Um, they have a, an Instagram, so I will link their Instagram down below. Um, they're gonna have some prizes going along with it. And um, at the end of January and then February, you have a chart that you've printed out and you can write what books you read for it and send it in to them and you'll be entered for the giveaway. But it's just supposed to, I think they're, they, they want it to be really fun and to cheer up winter and to kind of have some elements of whimsy to it and feel kind of like the summer reading challenges that we did when we were young um, through the library. And I just love the idea of having this really fun reading challenge in winter when we're inside um, a lot anyway. So I'll definitely be participating in that. Um, on the 31st of December, I will be getting my email of uh, the challenges that are out. So this is this video is going up um, well after those have been emailed out, but it's not too late to sign up and I hope you will. Um, then uh, let's see, just trying to think about which one I want to go over next. Okay, and then lastly, this is more a booktube goal than a um, uh, than a, a reading goal. I want to watch and review all of Frank Capra's films. Uh, so over uh, December, there was a Frank Capra film that I watched, and then I realized, you know what? I really enjoy all of his films. I love kind of the um, undertones of hope that they have. I always feel really like just warm inside after I watch his films. They're always really well done. There's so many famous iconic actors that do amazing performances in his films. And I thought, you know, um, I like having some variety in the videos that I do for booktube. And I think that would be something that would be really fun. And I feel like people that kind of like the books that I like, there might be a fair number of Frank Capra fans out there. Uh, so if you don't know who he is, he was a director um, in America and kind of like the the sort of the like baby boomer um, back from World War II, gonna, you know, just like living on top of the world um, type spirit really comes through in his movies. Maybe his most famous one is It's a Wonderful Life. Um, then also It Happened One Night with Clark Gable is another really famous one. I watched that years ago. I don't remember much of it, so I will be re-watching it. Um, and then you can't take it with you. Uh, so they just also have the lots of humor in them and heart. And yeah, I just thought that would be a really fun project. And I want to document it on booktube so I can look back on it later on. And I hope maybe you'll join me. Um, I don't know if there will be interest in doing a watch along. I don't know. Well, I'll just see what people say in the comments about that. And then lastly, regarding uh, booktube, I want to try to put up two videos a week. Um, we'll see how I'm successful with this, but I have a whole backlog of um, Q&A answers that I need to be getting up now and just other odds and ends. Uh, so I really, I sometimes it's really hard for me when I'm not feeling well to sit down and film a video, but I find when they're up and when I get comments, I'm always so glad that I put them up. It's really rewarding. So we'll see how I do with that. Yes. Yeah, so those are my goals for the year. Um, I can't wait to, you know, continue to watch everybody else's reading goals video and um, see see what everybody thought. And I will be back for another video soon. Bye. Everyone, it is future Kate. And I just wanted to add kind of an addendum to this. Um, so I did not include in my reading goals. And I was very, very sad to realize I hadn't included it. Uh, the fact that I will be participating in Lucy at Lucy the Reader has this really special classics reading challenge that she is doing this year. And you are, uh, she said you can use the hashtag classics community, um, kind of talk about the classics that you want to read. And so I did talk about, you know, in this video, the previous goals, I said I wanted to read more um, French literature, um, some Mark Twain, Louise May Alcott, obviously, because of the Louise May 2020, and then the Victorian classics that I will be reading 
um, for my Victober five star TBR or other Victorian read alongs that I am hosting. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to add that because I kept forgetting to talk about it in videos and I think it's such a cool challenge. Um, and there will be some classics a thons happening throughout the year. So yeah, I think the classics community, um, hashtag will be a really neat thing to use whenever I am talking about classics. So I will see you for another video and I hope you're having a great day.